Thank you are still watching The Globe. The International Conference on AIDS and Sexually Transmitted Infections, uh, ICASA President Professor John Idoko joins us now uh, via Zoom to talk about this upcoming conference. Uh, Professor, thanks very much indeed for joining us and welcome to the program. Okay, thank you. All right, Professor, um, I, I'm just wondering, this conference, um, is it going to be able to happen given that we're still in a COVID-19 environment and also that we may have gone through a fourth wave in South Africa? Well, thank you very much. Uh, I think the important, the first question is, uh, do we need to have a conference? And I, I, I think we really need to have a conference, if anything, to discuss all the issues that has come about, you know, as a result of COVID. COVID has undermined a lot of things, both political, social, economic, and also our health uh, services and infrastructure. And we must discuss all these problems and try to prefer a solution, you know. Uh, and therefore, this is why I believe that a conference is very, very important. All the gains we made with HIV, TB, and malaria are all being uh, sort of, uh, they are being removed mm -hmm. or being blunted by, by the COVID epidemic. So we have to look for a way of, of addressing all this. And the only way to do it is a conference. However, we recognize the impact that COVID has made, you know, uh, in terms of trying to put together a conference. So we've We've looked at three possible scenarios for which we can do this conference. The first of it is that if the situation of COVID continues to worsen, then we have no choice but to do it virtually. On the other hand, if we see the situation getting better, which I think probably it's going to happen, then we're going to look at doing it in a hybrid fashion. Mm. And by that, I mean, uh, we're going to bring in a few people observing all the COVID protocols. Uh, we're looking at anything between 1,000, 1,500. And then the vast majority of others will, you know, uh, participate virtually. Ordinarily in this conference, if there was no COVID, we normally have between eight and 9,000 people. But because of COVID, we have decided to scale it down. And we're hoping that we will get as many people vaccinated as possible. In fact, we're encouraging all the participants who are coming to get either the, the two shots or at least the minimum of one shot. And we're trying to encourage the governments of our various countries to assist with uh, vaccinating all those who have, you know, uh, who are potentially likely to be participants. So we put all these things together. We believe that it is possible to have this conference. And like I said, we will maintain a very strict COVID protocol, you know, whereby almost on a daily basis, if necessary, we will test people. And don't forget that we want to have as many people as possible vaccinated, you know, so I think the possibility of having the conference is, uh, is pretty high. And if we don't discuss this conference, Africa is going to be in trouble. Because right now, with all that is happening, only 2% of Africa has accessed the vaccine. And there's no guarantee that there's not going to be another epidemic. So we better start thinking and bringing together our scientists, our policymakers, the civil society to start looking at how we address uh, issues of emerging diseases in Africa. Um, I'm sure that top of your agenda is going to be how um, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted HIV uh, detection, treatment and management. Um, what are the big items in terms of why we've seen um, HIV affected and disrupted by COVID-19? Well, it's, it's not difficult to see, you know. I mean, you remember the lockdowns that we all had across the world. Uh, that alone disrupted 
people, you know, accessing treatment, accessing preventative services, accessing care. And as a result, you know, lots of people, you know, uh, had issues with uh, maintaining, you know, uh, virus oppression, which is key. Because as you know, HIV has, we don't have a cure. But we know that when you are suppressed, you are likely to live a normal life. And you therefore, in those communities where you have attained, you know, the 1990-90, which I'm happy to observe that uh, this province has made a lot of uh, progress in. There's a public health good. Consequently, the reverse is the case where there's a disruption. As soon as people no longer are suppressed, then the viral loads go up and the chances of transmission becomes a major issue. And I think that this is what's happened in a number of communities you know, across Africa as a result of the disruption. And the disruption is also in terms of, you know, getting the drugs into the various countries from the manufacturers. So there are all sorts of complicated issues that, you know, affected uh, prevention, treatment, and care services, you know, uh, for HIV. But also TB. And, and not only those, but even related diseases like, you know, hepatitis, etc. And don't forget that a lot of our patients also have uh, a lot of the patients with HIV have non-communicable diseases, blood pressure, diabetes, and these were also affected. And these are the very diseases that are, that put one at high risk to developing COVID. So it's like a vicious cycle. So you can see it's, it's, it's a major complicated issue in terms of how and why, you know, COVID has affected mm -hmm you know, uh, HIV service, at, particularly even at the community level. Uh, a lot of transmission is interrupted by civil society organizations doing their work and the activists, etc. All these were not possible and are still, you know, very limited because of the issue of COVID. So it's very easy to see how very, uh, how, you know, COVID has uh, undermined and impacted very negatively um, HIV treatment, HIV prevention, and HIV care services. So has HIV and uh, other diseases uh, become almost um, forgotten, or maybe the word is less top of mind, because there's so much focus on COVID-19? But precisely, that's why we mm. think that this conference is very important. We don't want to lose the gains that we've made with HIV. Unfortunately, we have to discuss COVID because if we do not address COVID, then we are going to go back to square one. So uh, while COVID is very important for us, uh, we, we are discussing all these other diseases, HIV, TB, STIs. And I think the important thing is we're trying to look at what we call integration. Because we have learned lessons and tools from HIV that we can take to all this, to, to COVID and, you know, all these other diseases, including even non-communicable disease. And I think this is, so it's just like using one bullet to kill so many birds. And I think those are the things that we need to learn. Part of the reason why we haven't been able to interrupt COVID transmission in many of our countries in Africa is because we are really not applying those tools that we used or we learned from HIV. And I think it's important for us, you know, to uh, discuss with ourselves, see where this is happening, how we can reinvigorate all those tools again, and see how, you know, we can cut down transmissions, which happen, you know, at the level of communities. So it's, it's like an integrated discussion you know, we're discussing all these diseases and seeing how uh, the three decades or more uh, of the experience and tools that we have learned from HIV, how do we take it to this new disease, you know, and how do we use it to even go to other diseases that we know 
uh, risk factors, you know, for COVID. Professor Idiko, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very, very much indeed for joining yeah, us. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry about my, my, my phone. It hasn't done pretty well, but thank you so much. No. You know, I really would have fancied that we had this, you know, after uh, the meeting this morning with the Premier. All right. But thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And we wish you the best okay, of luck thanks. with the conference. Thanks. Thank you. Good night.